please introduce yourself and your involvement in the IoT. Sure, Bruce. Thanks a lot for having me. Uh, my name is Dirk Slama. I work for Bosch Software Innovations. We are a relatively small company compared to our uh, mother, the Bosch Group, global engineering company. Um, our job is to help our customers and uh, Bosch business units to successfully um, enable IoT uh, business models and solutions. Can you uh, tell us when was your aha moment when you really realized there was something to this IoT thing? Yes. Um, I think I had my aha moment when uh, I started working with uh, one of the Bosch uh, sister companies, Rexroth, which is uh, a provider of uh, industrial components and equipment. And we started working on a project in the area of power tools. Now, I have to say, um, in my life, I have a lot of people telling me what to do. My boss, my, my, my wife, etc. And I could never imagine, you know, connected, intelligent power tools because I thought the last thing I want in my life is if I, in my spare time, you know, do some DIY work and now suddenly the power tools also start bossing me around. So I, I really uh, <laughs> couldn't imagine this. Um, it turns out that this is actually an incredibly interesting uh, use case for the IoT because if you use these kind of tools in an industrial environment, uh, things start getting uh, pretty complex, right? If you think of, for example, an aircraft, um, an aircraft has about 400,000 safety, crit safety critical joints, right? So if you use uh, tightening, tightening tools, um, you have a, about 400,000 processes and each of them has to be right. Okay, so when I do something in my garden, uh, you know, I can screw things up. It's not a big deal. But if you build an aircraft or something like this, um, you better don't. So this is where actually having control over the process and connecting these type of tools in an um, IoT uh, way is actually really important. So that was my aha moment. So your aha moment was when you were bossed around by your, by your tool? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, yes. Um, it is pretty good. So we've uh, actually brought this into the um, IIC as a test bed, right? Uh, actually, the first uh, public test bed announced by the IIC. Uh, it's called the Track and Trace test bed. And it's about basically managing um, handheld industrial power tools like uh, tightening, drilling, riveting, measurement tools, etc. Um, and integrating these type of heterogeneous tools into a consistent environment, leveraging uh, indoor localization to, to track these tools, creating dashboards, uh, reading data from these tools for uh, quality management purposes, uh, etc. And I think, you know, when you work in this type of environment, it is actually pretty much okay to be bossed around by uh, such a system because not only does it make you feel better that, that you really do a proper job, but it really also helps with, um, you know, going towards a zero defect strategy, so. Well, that's a good segue. I mean, um, can you maybe relate some of, some of your experience into best practices? What would be some good best practices to take away from, from this? In most IoT projects, at least in, in, in our experience, what you have to deal with is what we call the clash of two worlds, right? So you have to bring together the um, machine camp and the internet camp, right? So the internet guys are used to working, you know, with minimal vi viable products, thinking in terms of perpetual beta, you know, rolling out new features every day. Whereas the guys in the machine camp are used to, you know, five year product life cycle, sorry, product development cycles, uh, 30 year product uh, life cycle, the inability to change anything after you have rolled out your product. And in an IT project, you have to bring these two worlds together. And uh, that really requires that um, not only on the architectural side of things, but also on the organizational side of things, you spent a lot of care making sure that your setup is right. Mm -hmm. So getting, getting the business model right, getting the organization right. So it's funny, you know, your best practices have nothing to do with technology then. Well, some of them, <laughs> well, many of them actually have something to do with technology. But yes, um, you have to get all of these aspects right. And, you know, you won't get all of them right in, in, in the first instance. So you have to um, deploy a model which is, let's say, sufficiently agile that you can react to changes uh, as you go, uh, while also being stable enough to, you know, cope with these 
type of more industrial security relevant type of environments. Hmm. Well now, um, Bosch is a member of the IIC. Can you explain why did you join the IIC? Why, why is it that you're putting in the time here? So Bosch naturally being an international company um, is looking at different type of um, activities. So uh, another activity, Industry 4.0, uh, something that's uh, also very important to us. Um, and when we saw the Industrial Internet Consortium starting, we thought, okay, that's um, an additional really interesting organization that's um, more driving things out of the United States initially, uh, and now actually really becoming a truly global um, organization. So that's uh, very interesting to us uh, as an international organization that has its roots outside of the US because I think that really helps building bridges. Mm. Now what do, you, what do you want to get from the consortium? At the end of the day this is about um, validation. Validation of um, ideas, of business models, of technologies. So I think um, one really uh, valuable tool that has been established by the IIC is this concept of test beds, which of course are embedded into the context of reference architecture and all of these good things. But I think that in particular this uh, concept of test beds is particularly val valuable because at the end of the day a test bed helps us to take ideas and uh, validate these ideas in a controlled environment. Um, to make sure that uh, we can evolve these ideas in the right direction, validate them with customer requirements and gradually take them to market uh, together with uh, the partners and the ISC really helps facilitating this process. So you're working with other big companies, working with small companies, finding the gaps in, in the solutions and then finding a way to, uh, to make better solutions? Very much so, very much so. So think for example this uh, track and trace testbed. Uh, about the uh, handheld power tools that I mentioned earlier on. So here we've partnered up with um, Tech Mahindra and uh, Cisco. Um, and the next phase we will also work with uh, National Instruments. And I think this is a very interesting uh, partner ecosystem. If you look at the uh, methodology side of things, um, we also uh, work with Tech Mahindra, but also a, a smaller company, Machina Research, which is um, highly specialized focusing on, on um, IoT and uh, that's a very diversified set of companies that, that we meet here and uh, that we work with together uh, in the setting. So this is really very helpful because at the end of the day I think IoT is all about making things work together and um, putting the ecosystem in place is the first step.